Hello, friends and adventurers, and welcome back to Sally Cat Plays Exile 2 Crystal Souls. For those of you watching as these come out, I do apologize for the longer than usual break between episodes. I've been working on some behind the scenes stuff, and I thought this moment made for a pretty convenient cliffhanger. So, what mysterious things shall we find in these caverns below even exile? You find a patch of mushrooms. Your cave lore reveals that they contain some nourishment, at the cost of eventually making you highly ill later. Let's leave those alone. And yes, because I believe... There we go. Yes. Kazol has the cave lore perk, which occasionally does handy little things like that. Without cave lore, we would be able to tell that those are mushrooms, and probably edible, but we wouldn't know they make us horribly sick until they did exactly that. And here's another patch of also poison mushrooms. You find a patch of mushrooms. Your cave lore reveals that they are edible and even mildly nourishing. Hooray! We get a pretty decent chunk of food from that. And more nauseating mushrooms. So, yeah, had we not had the cave lore skill and decided to take our chances, that could have ended pretty badly for a while. I'm gonna start out hugging this north wall here. From this vantage point, you have an excellent view of the awesome waterfall to the north. Glowing moss dimly illuminates the amazing cascade. The echoing roars of its waters are pleasantly disorienting. Yes, it's pleasantly disorienting when you're not actually going down the waterfall. In that case, it is terrifying and disorienting. Oh, and we are back on this square of map. And nothing of particular interest in those little tunnels. Potentially something over here. I'd best do a cure before investigating that. And then step to the north directly into more poison. As you march down the passage, and by march down the passage we mean trip through the swamp, you begin to hear a strange, squeaking, chittering noise, distant at first, but approaching quickly. You turn back and face a group of bizarre insects of a sort you've never seen before. Meet the Chitrax, everybody! They are some pretty tough insects. Maybe not that tough at only 25 health, but they do get two attacks, shoot webs at you, and are generally very annoying. Right, right, Morwen is the priest. Oh, I didn't actually need to cure party there because... All the poison already wore off. This is starting well. more area of effect spells, and by more I mean any.
Okay, so that wasn't quite as bad as I remember to tracks being. The main difficulty with them is there's almost always a lot of them when they show up. This small, remote lake is filled with jagged, protruding rocks. Maneuvering will be difficult to impossible. In the middle of the lake is an island. On it is a small, glowing tower. Interesting. In the remote lake, we find the Barrier Tower. It is entirely covered in magic barriers. So, what can we do with this place? If you guessed absolutely nothing, you are correct! We cannot do anything with the Barrier Tower at this time. But don't worry, it'll come back up later. Much, much later. Yeah, there's a fair bit of just random little tunnels over here with nothing in them. Ooh, look, slime. Aw, oh, monsters fled. Oh, secret passage. And... Ghouls and ghasts. Undead. Yay. And, and one of them dropped five food, which apparently is still edible somehow. Ah, the joys of uh, RPG random number generator mechanics. Oh, doesn't this look interesting? The obelisk is worn and cracked. Ruined river fort. Yeah, ruined indeed. We've got some holes in the walls to let us right in. As if, of course, the gates weren't already open. So this appears to be some sort of Vanatai installation. It also appears to be infested with undead. That's not the party positioning that I expected, but I can work with it. Maybe I should get a fireball caster over here? Ooh, also. We have found our first Vanavoy. That is one of the Vanatai specific undeads. Now, we could wonder about why these ghouls and ghasts appear to be uh, human shaped more so than Vanatai shaped. I figure. Most of them are decayed enough that they're generally humanoid and any differences don't really matter anymore. Might expound more on that later. Can I cast a useful fireball from here? Only if I don't mind flame roasting all my frontline fighters. But that's what Light Heal All is for. Ooh, Vanavoys can poison. I forgot about that. So yeah, immune to cold, immune to poison. 
Yeah, pretty much your basic undead, except fully capable of poisoning you. Well, not basic undead, significantly more skilled than your basic undead. Eat that. Ooh, trouble is in trouble if I don't heal him right quick. Also, that last ghast seems to have run off on me. Never mind. Also, there's a green dude. Who are you, green dude? You are a new graphic for the white. He's got a draining touch, so let's try not to let him hit us. Ah, <sighs> what was that about not hitting? Are whites fire resistant or something? No, I think that was just a pretty bad roll on Scorn's part. Ooh, razor discs. Razor discs, aka one of the first thrown weapons that doesn't actually suck. In the wall here, you find a bronze plate with a hexagonal hole. It looks like something could be inserted into it and turned. Alas, we don't have anything that fits. No Allen wrenches or anything similar. Oh darn. Which means that we can't do anything with that portcullis. Oh, pick breaks. Yeah. Ooh, hi. I don't think I like you. I don't think I like you very much at all. Nope, nope, I really don't like you. But now you're gone. You find a small crystal box, which has been here for a long, long time. Even the mold and fungus burying it died ages ago. Open it. You find inside a small, steel, finely honed knife sitting on some padding that moldered away long ago. You carefully lift it out. Simmerine gets curved knife. And because it's not identified, I'm going to not do anything with it for the time being. Although I do have the remove curse spell if I really want to risk it. Another crystal box. Inside the box is a paper package, carefully wrapped. You have just enough time to realize that a paper package shouldn't be in these ancient ruins before it explodes. Who could possibly have prepared exploding runes this morning? Also, ow. Our 
That is our first sign, by the way, that someone more recently living might be out and about in these parts. Okay, we've got docks and no boat. So yeah, that is basically all we can do with this fort for now. We'll have to figure out some way to get a hexagonal bar or something that can fit into that hole. Well, guess we just got to do some more exploring. It will also help quite a bit to actually bring the boat over. But we've got more empty space over here. To investigate first. So yeah, on the subject of uh, human versus Vanity undead, I actually got into a comment thread on an Avernum 3 playthrough not long ago, well, a few years ago, suggesting that uh, Vanavoy and one or two other types of undead aren't just your garden variety undeads, but ancient Vanatai warriors or mages uh, specifically conjured up or summoned instead of uh, animated by angry ghosts like your usual undead. The water in this cave is unusually shallow and punctuated by protruding, slime and goo-covered rocks. Boating through this chamber will be a challenge. Far to the west, you see some sort of structure. It wasn't that much of a challenge. Watery ruins, complete with something nasty. Ice Hydra! Oh, wonderful. We are meeting so many interesting new monsters today. So, the Ice Hydra is fairly tough, cold-resistant, and will breathe ice on you. Actually, this might be a good time to equip. Doesn't Trouble have... Yes, I remembered something. Trouble has a ring of warmth. Come on, Scorn, I know you can do better than that. This is what happens when I give my primary mage and priest magically adept, but not my utility mage. And this is why it's often good to give your fighters some sort of ranged ability. I actually killed him with that one. Nice. More babies. They don't have ice breath, so I won't worry about them just yet. Very odd. You find a pile of tightly sealed crates, apparently put here quite recently. They are covered with a thin layer of some smelly substance, probably to keep the hydras away. The boxes are filled with rations, prepared in a style unfamiliar to you, but edible. There are also strange weapons, heavy razor-edged discs meant to be thrown. 
You can't imagine who would put a supply cache here, but that doesn't keep you from looting it. Okay, we will toss the razor discs over to my character with thrown weapon skill. Not much skill, mind you, but some, I think. Okay, how are we going to get over? Let's do a move mountains. Brilliant. In the back corner of this ruined building, under a layer of rust and debris, you find a waist-high pile of long, hexagonal iron rods. Each rod has a crossbar at one end, giving them a sort of T-shape. All this iron would make you rich were you to get it home. At any rate, nothing is stopping you from taking a few of them. Yoink! Simmerine gets hexagonal bar! I think I know where that might come in handy. Nuts. I do like how in the remake, Move Mountains will target the entire nearby area instead of specific squares. I guess I just can't get over there? How irritating. Unless... Haha, -ha, enter from the water. And, well, maybe there's something interesting under there. Nope, nothing at all. Back to the fort we go! Oof, Morwen is direly low on spell points. So we can enter the river fort from the river. Or maybe not. This gateway is blocked by a large portcullis, the bottom of which dips well below the surface of the water. You can't get by. Hmm. You insert the bar from the other fort, and it fits perfectly. With some effort, you turn it. As you do, you hear a clanking noise from somewhere. I hope that stays open while we exit and re-enter. Aha! There is a portcullis here, extending down to two feet above the surface of the water. You manage to squeak your way under. Excellent. Ooh, more stuff. And this portcullis is down so that we cannot get by. So we have to explore over here. The bars of this portcullis have fallen loose, enabling you to work your way in. Odd. The footprints in the mold on the floor are fresh. Who has been here before us? You open the door and see a small group of vanatai clustered around the wreckage of a small table. You start to greet them, but they immediately reach for weapons. For some reason, this bunch wants to kill you. Oh, crap. So we've got basic vanatai. Not that tough.
We've got Vanity Warrior. Pretty self-explanatory. And we've got Vanity Shaper, the mage class of the Vanity. Although this one's a priest. Oh, trouble is slowed, that's why. Right, right, more ones out of spell points. Why are there so many of you? Oh, that was harrowing. So, some Vanatai want to talk to us. Or at least, interrogate us. Some Vanatai want to kill us without asking any questions first. Things are getting complicated in the underworld. Someone has hollowed out a bowl in the ancient floor and filled it with a red, slightly fluorescent liquid. It steams warmly, even though there is no source of heat. By it is a small crystal cup. I am immediately suspicious. Also, I absolutely do not remember what this does. One of you tries the fluid. At first, it seems like you made a horrible mistake. Nausea doubles the tester over. Then, as quick as it came, the nausea disappears, replaced by an incredible sense of well-being. You all help yourselves. You have been healed. Neat. Handy right after a battle, too. Where are you? Oh. Aiming at me through a crack in the wall. There is a narrow crack in the wall here, leading into a part of the fort thoroughly devastated by the passage of time. Narrow, hazardous passages wend their way among the ruins. Suddenly, the corridor just to the west caves in. You manage to get away before the rockfall crushes you. Welp. One of you notices a place where the rock seems unsteady. You make your way carefully by. Hmm, I wonder if that's cave lore coming in handy again. This seems breakable. I will use one of my precious energy potions. Mostly because Morwen's spell points is the only thing I need. Oh. This could have been a good place for magic map, maybe? Ha! And we are able to open the second portcullis. Actually... True Sight. 
reveals not much where I was looking, but potentially something over here. Or maybe just some empty space. Yep. Just a- oop, rockfall. Yeah. Okay, this corner is somewhat more stable. This room is fancy. I see case, but I do not search it. I see identified scrolls. Ooh, Ice Bolt is not bad. Shockstorm could be amazing. Here we go. The floor ahead looks suspicious. There is a narrow crack in the wall here, leading into a part of the fort thoroughly devastated by the passage of time. I think this message is misplaced. On a pedestal at the end of the passage, you find a large, thick book. A brief glance reveals something bizarre. You understand it. It's in English. It's a fairly simple text on human magical techniques, from the surface world. You read through it, picking up some interesting knowledge. More interesting than the contents of the book, however, is the fact that it's here at all. You will remember this. Hmm. So I'm going to guess that boosted our mage lore. And yeah, very interesting. There's some Vanatai camped out here, lying in wait for us. And potentially spying on humans in other ways as well. So I guess there's a lot of unmarked spots where it just rolls a die to see if I take damage. Potentially mitigated by having cave lore. Hi. Free boat. I didn't think I'd find anything in there, but it's good to check. Can I get into this little corner over here? I'm not certain. I'm gonna investigate that just a little bit more. Ha! Question is, will we find anything worth the trouble? Yes, apparently we do. My, I hope that we find some place to identify and sell items fairly soon. But next time, further onward into the lands of the Vanatai. Have a good one, everybody.